Yes. So the agenda for today is I'm going to talk here at the beginning for at least 45 minutes, and uh, and then and then and then I goodbye. <laughs> Listen, it's, you guys are going to be crying at the end of it and stuff like that. You're like, you don't want to. So I, I'm going to talk, kind of lead us in a prayer, kind of talk about you know, why we're doing this. Many of you have heard these stories before, but I, I just want to, uh, to, to let, get everyone on the same page. And then well, Kevin is going to read uh, our official report from the committee. Uh, and I have some slides that go through that. And uh, Claude will fill in any gaps that he needs to in that. After that, we'll invite Mary who's uh, head over Alzheimer's Community Care to t- come and talk to you guys about Alzheimer's Community Care. After that, you, we'll open it up for questions. My, my goal is this is about an hour, so that, that's, that's my goal. So we'll, we'll see how that is. So let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Jesus, we thank you that you gathered us all together here. Lord, continue to keep us humble. Help us to not think much of ourselves so that we can continue to serve your kingdom uh, faithfully, Lord, that we can continue to bring your gospel, your good news, even to the least of these. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I've talked to many of you about, about this, but uh, I, I was thinking, I was like kind of thinking about what I was going to say, and I realized something. Three years ago, I was interviewing for the, the position here. Remember that, Lee? Remember that, everybody? Like that, that's like three years ago. That's a long time now. I've been pastor here for two and a half years. But one of my questions for the, the call committee that was in here was, what are you guys doing in the community, right? I was tenacious about that. Talked about it all the time. Carol's laughing, all that stuff, because that, that stuff really mattered to me, right? Like, and that's, that, mattered, that mattered a lot to, to what I thought was uh, important. And I'll get into why I think that's important here in a little bit. But there was just something kind of tugging me here because this, you know, my, my, my last congregation that I was at, average age was 35. I don't know what the average age is here. I, I don't have enough, to, I, don't, I don't have enough, I don't have enough toes to kind of count that high, right? Oh, Greta's like, oh man. But, but there, there's so many of us here are doing or have been part of and doing good things in the community and not because of any other ulterior motive, just because it's the right thing to do, right? Like that's, that's the one thing that I've heard from people is like, the reason why I want to do this is because it's the right thing to do. You ask Piper why she helps out with, with Sarah's Kitchen. It's because it's the right thing to do, right, Piper? Like that, that's like when I heard the first time I heard someone from this church say that was Judy Frederich. I can talk about her because she's not here. <laughs> Judy Frederich, there's a city of Port St. Lucie video talking about of her talking to um, the city of Port St. Lucie, and they're inter- interviewing her why she walks down the road and collects trash there at Torino and Cashmere. And she said, Have you ever seen that video before? She says in that video, they ask him, why are you doing this? And she said, because it's the right thing to do, right? That's, that's huge. That's huge. And that's a position of humbleness and, and service and, and making your community better just because it's the thing to do, right? It's, the, it's not doing anything else. You know, we're looking at the Gospel of Luke right now. And, and what, the Gospel of Luke at the beginning of it Jesus, oh man, see, I didn't have my warning to turn off everything. <laughs> the, uh, the, the Gospel of Luke talks, Jesus is bringing the kingdom of God in. He's ushering in the kingdom of God. And the way I define what the kingdom of God is, is it's miracles, healings, and parties. The kingdom of God is, Jesus is bringing in the good news, the miracles, healings, and parties of the kingdom of God. He's giving the good news to people who haven't heard it in a long time. He's giving those good news to people who haven't heard it in a long time. And when you look at who's receiving those miracles, healings, and parties, it's not those people who have everything. It's those people who have very little. It's those people who haven't heard anything good in a long time. That's, 
And that's how I understand the ministry of Jesus now. That when we look at Jesus' life, even look at through the lens of the cross, we see that the cross is Jesus going to the very least of these. And as Christians, we recognize that that's us too. That He comes to all of us to bring the kingdom of God to every one of us. To bring those miracles and healings and parties to all of us. So as a church, when we gather together to look for those who haven't heard the good news in a long time and give them the kingdom of God, I think that's excellent. I think that's amazing. Some of you have heard me tell this story, but about a year and a half ago now, we put together a group of people because we just paid off the debt for this place, right? We put together a group of people and we said, let's find a creative way to get back into debt, right? <laughs> like, like that's... But, but more so than that, the real purpose of that goal, all those people that just Kevin had stand up a little bit ago, was what's a place, what's something that we can do that's not just for us? We have this ability we could do something for ourselves, but what's something we can do that's not just for us? Could we build a preschool? Could we build a VPK? Could we, we had our ear down to the ground. Could we do an after school program? Could we ha open up a gym on, on, on premise here so to promote health and things like that? Could we do all these different, there, we even were talking about uh, like investing in a, in a, uh, um, a home for people who are addicted to substances. We were looking at everything. And then we started, someone said, well, they have these Alzheimer's daycares. And, 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 uh, and I had never heard of such a thing. <laughs> like that's, I was like, what? What are, what are these things? And we started looking more into it, and it just kept kind of snowballing. And I was still kind of on the peripheral of it, but then I got to meet Mary, and you guys are going to get to meet Mary here in a little bit. I'm setting you up. I'm setting you up. Yeah. All right, that's... Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, this is the very definition of helping the least of these. These families that don't know where to turn, don't know which way to go, don't know which way is up, right? And, and we have the ability now to help them. So, so and also... I get a new office out of this deal. So that's, <laughs> that's, really, that's, 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 that's really what's going on. You know, all, that, all, that, all that stuff. But in all honesty, like that, that's where I'm excited about this. So I'll invite Kevin up here now. So come on up, Kevin. We have, Kevin has the, the building committee report. And uh, we'll turn this on for you. And we have slides and everything. I get to narrate a pretty slideshow. I don't know whether that's good or bad. I think it's awesome when you think about the fact that we started out as a church. You heard all the different ideas he gave. Preschool, VBK. All of our ideas were down here. Who would have thought a year and a half ago it was going to be the opposite? In all honesty, did anybody really hear, think last year when we first started about expansion that we would be here today? And yet, the Lord has led us here. I think it's just utterly awesome. And I do want to say one thing. I want to say thank you to Ed Bach. I know he's not here tonight because his wife is ill. Ed really started us on this road in a lot of ways. And I want to make sure that we make sure we let Ed know that we know that this was one of his ideas to get started with. He had a couple other good ideas and this one is the one that stuck with his wife going over to St. Andrews. We got the information through with Mary. And look where we've got today. We're able to reach out to our community, potentially 45 people every day, about 35 people every day, that we're going to be able to help families. And all of us in here, myself included, are or have dealt with Alzheimer's in one way or another. And now we're working in a facility that we can help the neighborhood. The Lord has led us in this awesome way. So 
I want to, I hope I got the right report here. It starts off with Pastor Chris indicated, no, it's not the right one. <laughs> Which one? Show me a slide so I know where I'm starting, Chris. Do you want me to go with the one with the slides? That's the one with the slides. See, they give me, I get three sheets of paper and, and Lee's notes, and then I really get confused. Actually, I may need to be joining this place in about another 10 years. <laughs> okay, the building committee, that's us. Proposes that the church construct a 6,129 square foot building and a 20 foot by 40 foot storage garage. Think about that. 20, I like that size. Uh, this, unfortunately, I think Phil's going to have fun cleaning it out every once in a while. And we will be building this in partnership with our Alzheimer's community care at the cost of about $1,275,000. ACC's share will be approximately $750,000 in available cash upon receipt. Grace's share, about $525,000. Money from our current building fund, a pledge drive and a construction loan, which will become a 20-year loan at about 4.25% interest from the Lutheran Church Extension. Grace will own the building and will provide the services to ACC, and ACC will sign a 30-year lease. Lease payments will cover the cost of services provided, water, sewer, garbage, electricity, general maintenance, because they paid their rent for the 30 years up front, right? Okay. Repairs, maintenance, and insurance will be shared between us. ACC's board of directors has already approved the project. LCEF does not see a problem with the loan, and the design and build contractor, TRM, has already signed off on the required documents. The design, build cost, plus construction with a 50-50 savings clause. In plain words, if we save, we split what we save between us. Make sense? So there's money to be saved on the contract, certain things that we put in there that we may have to have. And if we don't have to have them, guess what we save? Another thing we talked about is getting the garage built first. And then Grace buys the materials, and we store it in the garage. Anybody know why if Grace buys the materials, we can save money? Tax exempt. So we can buy the materials for the contractor. And think about this. A million dollars, how much of that could be tax exempt? Hmm. And so savings like that, we could split between us. Okay? So that's where that 50-50. Specifications, material selections were made by ACC and approved by our building committee. They're putting in 62%. They're going to be using the majority of the building. So the color selections and the floor selections, because they're the experts in that, we let them help make the selections. We looked at them. We liked them. One of those is the roofing material up here. They really didn't worry about that one. We did. This roofing material is not exactly like the present roof that we have. But the present roof we had would cost about 60000 more than this one would. And this one's just as good. Same color, more screws. <laughs> when we put the roof on up here, insurance paid for it. <laughs> We're paying for that one. Guarantee, life ability, same thing. Okay? So, schedule of value. Uh, Schedule of values, it's going to be a basic construction estimate and the initial plans and re rendering. You've seen it. I think this is the one Mary's taking home this tonight. So Mary's going to be taking this home tonight, but we still have ours hanging up in there. Okay. Uh, the documents are available for review. The documents we're signing. We're not hiding them from anybody. You say, I'd like to see the documents you're signing for this. Here they are. In the past 10 years, have you known me to hide anything from you? No, and we're not going to start now. You want to see them? You can see them. The AIA contract we signed with the construction company, tentative, we'll finish off the papers later, is a basic construction contract that's used by everyone. And if you want to see it, guess what? We've got it. So don't be afraid to ask if you want to see them. We're not hiding anything, okay? The only construction cost that cannot be qualified at this time is a possibility of a D lane, D for deceleration. We don't know whether $60,000 or $80,000 is going to have to go out for that. 
until all the plans are put with the city and they make a decision. And that leads me to that parking lot. All of us would like to see a nice paved area for the parking lot. What do you think the city's going to notice if we decide right now to make any changes to our parking lot? More cars. More cars means you must need a deceleration lane. So let's get you, you can pay right now for the new parking lot. Let's go ahead and put a new deceleration lane out there. So we spend an extra 60, 80,000 now on a deceleration lane. We're trying to avoid that. So I'm gonna say right now, and building committee, you can tell me if I'm different. We're not gonna do anything to the parking lot for the first year or two. Because we don't want to raise their thoughts of us having to put, because within a couple, three years, don't we hope they're gonna widen this road anyhow? Let the city pay for it. You just increased your taxes to do it. So let the city do it. So we're not, and I wanna say that up front because a lot of people have asked me. And they're thinking, you put in a new building, you're gonna do a new parking lot, right? We're gonna avoid that right now but we're also trying to save $60,000 to $80,000. How much of a nice parking lot could we make in a couple years with $80,000? Not bad, huh? So I want that out in the open. Again, everything's out in the open. So we don't know. The city may come back and say, hey, you're building a new building, so put it in a D lane. Then we'll have to get that money for that one. So the final cost for the drawings and the time to uh, obtain a building permit from the city will be about, once we approve, am I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, once we approve on February the 17th, if we approve, it's about five to six months before anything's gonna start out there, right? So February, that would be March, April, May, June, July, Somewhere between August and September, they might shovel a load of dirt out there. Does that make sense? Well, we'll do get it done quicker than our sign was done, at least. <laughs> August to September, we won't be turning any dirt out there until about then because it takes time for the city. And remember, if somebody squawks in the backyard, then we may have to go back and revise something for them, right? So please keep that in mind. But we still plan to get started before the sign was finished. Okay. And any complaints on the sign or any blessings on the sign, Lois is right back there staying very low. Thank God for Lois. Yeah, we need to give Lois a clap because she's actually the one that would, went after him with the bear. Oh, by the way. We haven't sent him a check yet. I thought I might give Lois the, the check. I thought I might give Lois the cash of $100 bills and let her take him there every once in a while. <laughs> well, I, I, apparently they have, but I haven't seen the bill, and I'm the financial secretary, so what I don't see, I don't know. <laughs> it hasn't been approved yet, so we're working on it. So, uh, so that's the cost. So now, Pastor, you said we have some slides. You have some more that you want to add? It's, it's all pretty obvious stuff. Uh, we have $65,000 on hand in the building fund right now, right? Correct. And so, uh, and we're adding 3000 of that a month right now. And remember, in our budget, when we stayed, set it up, we said we're keeping the mortgage active in the budget so that when we do something like this, we aren't all of a sudden hit with an, in an impact of an increase. So we're already paying 3000 a month. So about 45,000 times by the time we get the building completed. Mm -hmm. I would like to do either in the fall or this time next year, a small capital campaign. And we're thinking about hundred grand on that. Uh, and so, and then the loan would be about $400,000. All said, that's $610,000, right? That, so that you put that 610 there at the top. And uh, so less, the construction cost would be about $525,000 and some other closing and stuff like that, that leaves about 60 left over. And what we're thinking of that 60 left over is 
Uh, it sure would be nice to have some good landscaping done around here. This, get this new, nice new building. Uh, you know, let's, let's make this whole area look cohesive. Let's not have like the old looking building along with the new one, right? And, this is and, the original landscape when we bought the building years yeah, ago. Yeah, and so, and, and the Alzheimer's group, you guys, your, your spaces look beautiful. So we're excited about what the new building is going to look like. And so what I'm proposing is that we also make this building look like that too. And so, and, and uh, it's very homey color. It feels like home in, in, your, in your spaces. So, so that's stuff that we're looking, if we have anything extra that, that we would do is kind of what we're thinking there. Um, let's see, then, uh, so here's the breakdown of the loan and what it would cost us. Uh, $400,000 loan, uh, debt, you know, the, the, the debt service monthly on that would be $2,375. You put some insurance, maintenance, we have to mess with those, those numbers some, but you got 3000 right there. And keep in mind on the insurance estimate, we already withhold money for our insurance payments. We are, we're putting that in that wind mitigation fund for us. So these are, again, that's another line that's already being set aside. Yeah. So, so that's, we're going to do questions at the end. So, that, that's, uh, so, so remember it. Remember it. So, so that's, so it's, you can see our, one of our goals from this very first thing is what we are paying now to ourselves if we could get somewhere near that with a new thing. All right? So, so that it does not, it doesn't feel like there's anything kind of big, right? We're already paying for it. And so that, that was our goal with it. But yeah, that's, that's, that's basically it. So, so um, remember, we're going to ask questions at the end, but Mary, I'd like to invite you up yes, if, you, if you wouldn't mind coming up. So again, I, again, I stress, like I, I was, I, I didn't know anything about your group, your organization, or even what they did. And then you came and talked to us, and I was like, oh my goodness. And then when we were talking with the group, I said, when we have the meeting to hash out this deal, we have to get Mary there. Because I want everyone here at this church to meet you. <laughs> right? Like that's like, like and, and so they can meet your organization, they, so they can meet what you do, what your organization does, who you are. And, and because I told them, and don't make me a liar, please, like that. <laughs> I told them that they will have a story to tell afterwards about what our church is going to be able yes. to do yes. and what we will be doing. And you, you'll have something to talk about when you're sipping wine and all that stuff. So thank you Wine's so much, Mary. Wine's a good Mary. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good yeah. Idea. So Mary Barnes. Thank you. Well, I've got my boss here. Uh, he's our chair of our board, Mr. Robert J. Gorman. And uh, so I can't, I can't flub up. I cannot flub up, and uh, I've known Bob for, oh, gee, going on 20 years or something like that, yeah. And then I also bought, bought my money person who tells me what I can and cannot spend, which is our vice president of finance, Mike Valdez. So I don't do this at all by myself. I have other people that I have to account for, too. Um, when I came here, and I haven't really said anything to Claude or Pat, and I haven't said anything to Chris. But you know, um, my religious training is Salvation Army. That's my religious training. And uh, the reason why I never became an officer, because many, many years ago, when you became an officer, you couldn't wear any lipstick. <laughs> I did not think that was a good idea. And I know my weaknesses, okay, and lipstick was one of them. But when I came here, and I met Chris, and I met Claude, I met Pat, you know, we do have some wonderful, wonderful relationships with other churches, and other, you Lutherans are fantastic, are fantastic. You know, um, just knowing the whole way that you want to help others is really what Alzheimer's Community Care is all about when it comes to families. Now I'm gonna say something that is very close to me and I don't say it too much in many circles, but as the disease progresses with people, with individuals, with our, with our patients, I do believe when this disease gets into you, 
you're the closest to God you'll ever be. Do you hear what I'm saying? I believe that. The spirit of that person. So that's why we as an organization have to be so committed to what it is in the care. Both, both the caregiver and the patient. So when I came here and I met the representative from your church, I felt drawn here. I really did. Because we are making a big financial commitment. We did at St. Andrews. Who went over to St. Andrews and saw that whole operation? That was $420,000. We also did a big renovation at a, uh, a lot of the churches that they run about between three fifty and four hundred, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They're through the goodness of other donors that do this, and we will get donors up here to do that as well, because this is more than just doing daycare. This is a spirit, and this is the care, and it is actually getting to have people have hope when everybody's telling them there's none. And that's what we do every day. We just had a big fundraiser. We have to go out and earn money. So I've been in Palm Beach today and doing a fundraiser. And it was very, very successful getting people to understand what it means as a family to have Alzheimer's and what it means to give hope and help to the families. Because so good for, go for the grace of God, so could you or I. Remember that. It is all of us. We don't know what makes this disease happen to somebody. We don't understand the different types of the different diseases of how it affects the brain. So all that, there's, and everybody's been talking about a cure for how long now? For how long? Oh, since the 19, I, I would say 70s. Since the 1970s. And I came involved in the work of Alzheimer's back in 1985. And I was around when people had the misconception of what it meant to have this disease and to have Alzheimer's. I also remember how our community treated Alzheimer's families. And I'm going to bring up one big community that has stepped up to the plate, in the plate and that's law enforcement. Law enforcement, when somebody back in the 19, like say, say 1990s, or somebody said my husband left, or 1985 or 86, if, if somebody called up the local police and said, my husband just left, he has Alzheimer's, oh, he'll be back. If he's not back and within 72 hours, we'll come and, you know, you tell us about it, we'll go look for him. Police had no understanding, and then when they would meet somebody, that is going through some sort of anxiety and is in the community, police did not know how to talk or not how, how to present themselves and how to communicate. That's all changed. That's all changed. When an Alzheimer's caregiver calls or calls the police, they're right there. They go right out. They have the helicopters. They have the dogs. They look for that patient right away because they know time is of the essence to find that person. Our organization did the legislation for the silver alert. You know the silver alerts out there? We did that. Why? Because we wanted to raise the awareness and really have an impact for our community. Those many, because it isn't just us here, it's the whole community. And when they're saying there's 70,000 Alzheimer's patients diagnosed between uh, St. Lucie, Martin and Palm Beach County, that's understated. I will tell you that's understated. So where is, and, and, and when you're talking about uh, care in assisted living facilities, you know what memory care units are charging? What are they charging? Too much. <laughs> I like you, by the way. I've been watching you. Um, too much is too much, yes. We're talking 6,000 month, 10,000. I've even seen it as high as 15,000. Okay, that, and, and do they get the kind of care, the understanding of what it means to have Alzheimer's and what it means to have the care and the caregiver? 
So we decided as an organization a long time ago, there's been a lot of talking all these years about research and telling and having classes and letting everybody understand what is Alzheimer's and what is it, uh, what does families uh, look like for treatment and for, and for help. And Alzheimer's Community Care said, you know what? The talk's got to stop. They got to start walking the walk. And that's what we do. So we, we had, a, way back in 1986, 87, we came across the idea of having a daycare because that's what caregivers were saying. I need respite during the day, I need help. So we came across, a young man came down from uh, North, North Carolina. His name was Mark Cornett. And Mark wanted to have a daycare started. And I said, I didn't have any money for the day. I didn't even understand what he was talking about. But there was a person he had up there that he learned from. Her name was Vera Guise, and she was a nurse, and talked about this concept of Alzheimer's. So I said, OK, how are we going to do this? Well, let's do it in a church. Let's do it in the community. Because at that time, a lot of these types of care units were put into institutions, part of institutions. Families didn't want to be that close to the that issue of nursing home care. So how do we get it in the community? So we went to church, Advent Lutheran Church in Boca. Very charismatic leader, Ron Dingle. Very charismatic leader. And Ron got it right away. He says, you're going to do this in my church. And he was the father of the model that we're doing now every day in the community. He was an inspiration, and he also helped other churches that we had a chance to talk to, just like you all did, is visiting these different churches. He was the one that was started it all. And matter of fact, Pastor Dave Dangerfield was with him for 10 years. Okay, that was back in 1986. Ron now has the disease. Okay. And we're helping out his wife and his family. So this is very personal to us. This is very personal to us. And he was the dreamer. He was the vision. He helped us set up the model on how to work with all of you and how we know we're, not, we're, we're just occupying your home. This is your home. This building is your home. We understand that. So we have a chance to share, to help others. And we have... Our ministry and you have your ministry and that's what this is all about so in this beautiful building that we're going to come together with we've got we're going to have some offices our family nurse consultants now who are they they are nurses that work strictly with the families when you get this disease and you get this diagnosis what do I do where do I go what is right what is wrong what are other kinds of help out there? What kind of care? And everything is Alzheimer's disease, or what's the other word that they use? Yeah. Ah! Bad word, bad word. Because it's like, remember way back years ago was senile senility, you know? Remember that word, senility? Okay. You know, senile, senility. You know, you know what senility means in the, if you ever look at Webster's Dictionary? It said, somebody old and somebody confused. That's what it was. This is a disease process that's going on. So it needs treatment, it needs help. And there are some inroads and things that are happening. Okay? But it's not here yet. And it's going to take a while. So we have a lot of families out there. When we say 35 a day, it's not just that 35, because you have other people. Not everybody comes five days a week. And we're talking 7.30 in the morning to 5.30 at night. That's 10 hours of care. Guess who that's going to help? A lot of working people. You know, our, care, our seniors can't retire that fast. And they're having to work. And we got a lot of children taking care of mom and dad, too. And they have to work, and they have families. So that's why we go all day like that. Now, for private pay, that's $70 a day. OK? That's $70. Well, we do get other dollars for scholarship dollars from the state. So we work very hard to do that. But you get a home health agency in your home. 
for seven to, uh, for ten hours a day. How much do you think that costs? So, and we have two nurses on the floor. We do one on five. So when you have two nurses, they're watching. Why, why is nurses so important to be involved in our model of care in the community? Why do you think? Pardon? It's a disease that's progressing. And so what it could be like today doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be like that tomorrow. So we have many, many times interrupted or intervened on a process that person could have been in the hospital, but they're not. Because that caregiver comes in and says, you know, my mother didn't sleep too good last night. I don't know what's going on. Well, you know what? Her coloring might not be that well. There's something wrong with the coloring. Well, we'll watch her. As the day progresses, all of a sudden, they know our, our staff understands their behaviors. They understand their pace. They understand how they relate, either eat or drink. One had a, a uh, blood clot on the lung. We were able to intercede right away. I can tell you lots of stories like that. But that's because, now in a nursing home, for a nurse to see a patient in a 24-hour basis, by law, how long does a nurse spend with a patient in a nursing home? Two and a half hours out of 24. Out of 24. So our nurses are there 10 hours a day. So it's a lot of supervision. And there's a lot of activity. We're believing more into technology and also, we don't have any television sets, except if we're going to use the television set for a Wii program or some sort of exercise, which we're really getting into. We also like the idea of having Alexa in the room. <laughs> OK? Alexa, I would like to sing Elvis Presley, Blue Suede Shoes. Our, 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 our patients are in the 70s. It's not row, row your boat here, OK? <laughs> And we had a legislator stop by the other day in our Delray Beach facility, and all of a sudden, his favorite singer is Elvis Presley. Well, he really got into it, and everybody got dancing. That's what goes on all the time. I could show you a video that we had today, I wish I had brought it, about how much fun our patients have, engaging. Because what's the biggest problem for our patients? Being at home. What's the biggest problem? Vegetating. Having an empty day. Nobody deserves to have an empty day. Everybody has a chance and deserves to live every day and have a life every day and have friends and get into, that's why we only do one on five, too. We've come up with this magic number of 35 because we feel that for this kind of a disease process, the chemistry of that is very, very high quality of being able to provide the interventions every day. So that's the kind of a day our patient, what do our caregivers get out of this too? They get other resources. They understand about, we make sure that they understand as the disease process and we have uh, the information, we get packets and we give them not all at once, it's just one step at a time. Because not everybody, you meet one Alzheimer's patient, guess what? You meet one Alzheimer's patient. And you also don't know what the resources are with the caregivers. They're all different. So I don't know if there's anything I forgot. Is there anything more I should say, boss? Oh, yeah, the ID locator. Let me talk about law enforcement. Um, we have this transmitter now. We've, this has gotten to be one of the most popular pro projects that we've done. Uh, is one of the things, unfortunately, that happens with patients in early stage two is wandering. You've heard the word wandering. Well, you know what? A patient doesn't really wander. They want to go someplace. They have a mission. They want to go home. Where's home? Where's home? It's Nebraska. It's New York. It's Kansas. It's everywhere. And when the law and when the officer says, "What can I do?" You know, what's going on? He says, "I want to go home." 
So the, so, the, so the patient gets in the car, okay? Well, I don't really recognize, so guess what? For a whole shift, we're riding around. And guess what the caregiver's doing? Frantic, out of control, miserable. So these transmitters that we work with, that we get, they're about $400 a piece. We buy them, though. We don't rent them. We buy them. And we've had wonderful donors to help us buy them. And we have a whole team that goes into the houses and goes in. And they also come into daycare, a lot of our patients in our daycare. But also, families come to the daycare to get them cleaned, to get them the batteries taken care of. So there's always a traffic. There's always that inner relationship with the community. And instead of having somebody lost for hours, we find them in minutes. And law enforcement has the equipment. We work with the sheriff's office. They know us very well, Sheriff Mascara. And we work with, and so what we work out, they have the receiver, and of course, we have the transmitter. So when somebody leaves, of course, the caregiver is well-educated. They have all the phone numbers, and they know how to proceed. And they know it's immediate that they call, because that's what law enforcement wants, too. Okay, so when they call, they start that pinging, and we find them within minutes. When a, pay, when a caregiver, when a family first comes in and tells us, the doctor has just told them, told them that there's Alzheimer's and their loved one has Alzheimer's. And here's another slogan, here's another uh, slogan that we have in, this, in, in the organization. We may have an early stage caregiver, but we often have a late stage patient. Why is that? Why is that? Because guess who's the hero here? Guess who's thinking that things are going to happen different? It's going to be OK. And let me tell you something I've learned in this whole job. There's a difference between men and women. Men handle this whole, a problem, this whole disease process differently than women. What do you think the difference is? I'm not going to rock the boat. I'm not going to tell my wife that she needs to have somebody come in the house and tell and help. Men don't want to. Even though they hear about the disease process, they're in denial, too. Denial is our biggest enemy to getting help to families. Am I being too honest with everybody? Huh? This is reality. This is what we deal with every day. But if you can give families help, you give them hope. And that's what we do. You don't throw anybody away. I don't care. And this disease is so unfair in so many ways. So I honor all of you for recognizing this as a real, real challenge, but also a real need. And our families can be safe in their community, into their homes. And we will make them that way. But one of the things we do when there is a new person that comes in, the one way we can help them right off the bat, and it helps to, to compromise the fact that they're in denial. Because this is what law enforcement's going to do if they run across somebody that, or they get a call that my husband has lost or my wife has driven away. They'll say, have you got a picture? So one of, the, one of the things we say is you take the whole family, you take out that iPhone and you take a picture of your loved one and you keep that and you tell everybody in your family to make sure that they have that too. So that starts registering on the safety. So we have safety and security. It's one of our, our, our pillars of, our, of, our, of how we set up ourselves as the foundation for services and resources. So safety and security is huge. Dignity and integrity we protect throughout the whole disease process for our families. We're very big advocates. Very big advocates. We want to preserve their quality and well-being of their life as well. Those are the simple three things. Everything you see, and if you go to our website, which is alscare.org, O-R-G, there's not a service in there that's not related to one of those three pillars. Otherwise, we don't do it. If it doesn't fit in, with our pillars of what it means to preserve dignity and integrity of a family and make sure we conserve um, their safety and security, we provide their safety and security and their well-being and welfare. That's what we're all about. So we're not complicated. 
but a lot of things we do are complicated when it comes to working with all these different uh, needs of our families. So, any questions? One on five. What's the ratio of patient? It's not nurses. It's, we, we have two nurses on the floor, but then we have aides, and they're all licensed, though. They're all licensed. Will with Stock Park? We're only going to have five cars. You know, this is, people are going to be going in and out, and, there, and, and, and hopefully we work it out with the transportation two that's available, we work out with them as well. And by the way, we have a wonderful relationship with the building, the building people over there at the city of uh, Port St. Lucie. That's good to hear. We have a wonderful, <laughs> we do have a very good relationship. We have a very, matter of fact, when we did the open house, when we did the open house with um, uh, St. St. Andrews, we had the best showing of government support. We had their mayor, we had their city commissioners. We had uh, we work with uh, the P and Z. We work with the building code department. I mean, we we had them all there. That's great. So they like us. <laughs> what do I, what do I don't know around here? <laughs> what kind of what kind of agreements do you guys have with them? <laughs> no, we 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 uh, and we do uh, the right stuff, the quality. Um, and I'll be bringing some donors by. Mm -hmm. Next Tuesday. Yes. Yes, we have to have our... Mm -hmm. Huh? Not next Tuesday. The following oh, Tuesday. The 18th. It's the coming. 19th. The 19th. The 19th. The 19th. So, yes. Opportunities for volunteers? Yes. Absolutely. So that, that Absolutely. question was... We have a wonderful Live Alone program. And for caregivers that are no longer caregivers... Okay, after they have, we've gotten them through the journey, past the journey, we do have a lot of people that are in their different stages of Alzheimer's, but they're all alone. They have no husband, they have no wife, they have no children. And so we have these caregivers, former caregivers, that have that Alzheimer's ear. And especially we also focus on veterans as well. And we try to get veterans that were caregivers as well. Because veterans, I have learned, veterans talk to veterans. They trust veterans. So we recruit veterans that were caregivers. And we match them up. And we keep a lot of people out of trouble. Because guess what? But now, the one rule is that our volunteers can never meet that person out there. Because then, it bec then the lines get crossed. And remember... You go to a bartender or your hairdresser, you tell them a lot more than you will your kids, right? <laughs> and that's what we've learned. We've learned that. Any, any opportunities here at the facility? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We might even go on some field trips. We might need volunteers for that. Yes. Yes. There is a limit. Okay, yes, we can. We take them pretty progressed. The good part is that in the process of what we do, we keep people very highly, um, how shall I say, at a higher level. Instead of having them vegetate for so much that they get into that very bad stage when they're physically, they're, other, they're, they're able to function uh, at a pretty higher level. It's that vegetation that gets to be the real issue. So as long as this person is weight-bearing, they're able to wait, you know, bear their weight, because the other why, the reason why, if they're not, it's not safe. It's not safe for them, and it's not safe for staff. If if there's have to be two or more staff that has to keep this person uh, toileting and doing, it's not good. It really, there comes a point in time that there might be other types of level of care, and we help the families with that, because we deal with other organizations as well and other home health agencies, as well as uh, facilities. So, but we try, let me, say, let me just say this for, an, for a statistic. 
88% the last eight years of our patients in our daycares never made it into a nursing home because we keep them that routine. We keep them stimulated and keep everybody stimulated and involved. And we try to also support the caregiver as well in that process. Yes. You're going to be very popular. Uh, oh, she would like to know when we have a waiting list, right? We, which we will. Well, let me tell you something. There is another Lutheran church over there in tradition. There's a young lady over there, and she's been talking to us as well. Now, you've got 5,000, 8,000 homes going to be built over there. I'll tell you, and the first group, the first, uh, the first 5,000 are all going to be 55 plus. So we know that. We know that. But you're a priority here because we're here with you. So that's part of the deal. They got to build their church. Yeah, they got, they're going to build. Uh, I've, talked, I've talked to the young lady over there. And they're trying to get their own, uh, work it out with uh, GL Homes or whatever. I don't know what kind of su success they're going to have. But she's a good, she's a firecracker over there. It be a oh, it's a Lutheran church. Yeah. Yep. I'll tell you, you guys, I'll tell you. I'm very impressed with the whole Lutheran movement, have been for a very long time. And uh, they've worked with us very closely on allowing us to be able to do what we do. And, we, and, and we'll make you proud. We make you proud. So I assume that's why you're doing this here. We're not that close to St. Andrews. There's, there's a few miles between the two of us. Yeah. There's a few miles between the two of us. But they do have a waiting list, I have to tell you. They do have a waiting list. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to be as roomy, by the way. We our license for 35, but we look at the safety for our patients, and it's a little tight, so we keep it at 30. But we could go 35 if we wanted to, but we don't want to. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, we are. We're 501c3. We're as pure as the church. <laughs> we are as pure as the church. <laughs> huh? We are tax exempt. Yes. As I said, we're the same as you guys. Only we have to have our books audited. You don't. Sure. Just, sure. yes. <laughs> we have to go through an audit. And by the way, for every dollar we get, 92 cents goes directly to services and resources. And I can prove that. My boss can prove that. Yes. We ask people for money. He says, How, where does most of our money come from? We do have, remember, we serve three counties, Palm Beach, Martin, and St. Lucie counties. Our budget is almost $8 million. So uh, we write grants. We have $2 million worth of grants that we write all the time. And then we fundraise and we get donations, and we get, um, so that's, I would say that our donations and grants and our local resources, and we'll be going to the county here, in St. Lucie County, we'll be going, we, we do get money from the county, and we're also a United Way agency up here. So we get funding from United Way. So needless to say, everyone, we are well audited. 
and well looked at. And that's the difference between us and the church. <laughs> Just to be totally transparent here. Do you want to supervise the well, question? Uh, yeah, with that. Well, how many facilities do you have in your town here? Eleven. Eleven. This will be twelve. How many are the second? This will be the third. And Mr. Gorman is very happy about that because this is his home. And he lives up here. The second one is at uh, Jenkins Road, St. Peter's. Peter's. So we have St. Peter's, and then we also, of course, then we go down to uh, St. Andrews. Yes. One of the things we don't have on these plans that maybe in time we, we, can, about. we can sit down and mm -hmm. talk about is there's a garden. Now, we have a uh, garden in a backyard that we brought in a gazebo from Pennsylvania, which was like a piece of furniture, by the way. <laughs> Those Amish make beautiful gazebos. And uh, it was at uh, North Stewart, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. So we're in there. So. So also. We love backyards. Boca has a Advent Lutheran Church. We have a beautiful backyard. Yes. And uh, we've got a very nice group. St. Andrew's Country Club has adopted us. And they're just cleaning it all up in the backyard. They're buying furniture and outside area because it's good to get everybody on the outside. We can as well. And of course, there are months we can't be out there. But there are like right now, it's a beautiful time to get everybody outside. And something Mary told, told us too, and bef while we were still getting the design laid out and all that, Mar Mary said, I think it was you, that said, you guys have such a beautiful oh. property. Like, can, beautiful. Can, can we do something to where we utilize the beauty of that? So outside. if you look at the plans, the back wall is like, is like our well, the foyer area out there. It's got huge windows that face the woods, and Mary was like, at some point, I'd really like to put in a little garden. A little garden outside, there. a little sitting yeah. area, having a place for, and, and there are groups like, um, you know, women's groups and gardens groups and everything. I know we could get them to donate and put, help us with making that a beautiful walkway and a beautiful piece, place for people to be out there. Yes. Here's another thing we do. And this is with uh, Indian River Community College. Community State College. College, college, State College. <laughs> OK. We're now college, State College. Um, they have a nursing program. And we have an educator. Her name is Karen Gilbert. And she has been a nurse. And she's getting her doctorate in nursing on Alzheimer's. As a matter of fact, Palm Beach Atlantic University has allowed her and they told her to do this. Her dissertation is on her work with us. It is a breakthrough on identifying the academic side to this disease and teaching. Our, we we're advocating for a bill in, in the Capitol. This is one of our advocacy up there, is having doctors have a credit on going and doing a credit on Alzheimer's. Because they, right now, I've got to tell you, I know more than a doctor when it comes to the treatment and the care of this disease. And that's terrible to say. That is terrible to say. Now, the chemicals and the chemistry and the medication, of course, I don't. But when it comes to the approach and how to, how to, how to be able to work with and understand the dynamics of the disease, yes. So we are very big into nurses. We have, 20, we have about 30 nurses that work for us right now. So. Yeah, we're very big into nurses. So, I love nurses. Any nurses in the room? Aha! Volunteer, yes, we can, we can get a program manager to. That's okay. We take retired people. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay? 
Yes. Oh! <laughs> we have to take down these people's names and phone numbers and, 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 and social security number, whatever. And, 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 and numbers for their nursing license. Yes. They have to have a probable Alzheimer's disease or some or their neurocognitive disorder. That's what we, that that is our population that we serve. It's not going to happen like that. I wish it did, but it doesn't, huh? But they're all different types of stages too. You got to understand this is a disease that goes for two to twenty years, and you got all different stages of caregivers. So. And then you've got a different, also you've got people, you know, this, this disease doesn't care your, your economic status. There's very wealthy people that have this in this disease too. So we work out a program for them. Ted Turner has got um, Lewy bodies. I just found that out. Yeah, you're right. Did you see that Jane Fonda, Act 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5? Yes. It was very good, by the way. Uh, but Ted Turney, yeah, he's uh, Louis Bodies. What is Louis Bodies? You know what Louis Bodies is? He wasn't diagnosed yet. That's what that he was going to be, and he thought he was going mad, because one of the things about Louis Bodies is you have a lot of delirium, and hallucinating, and this man went by his wits. You know, he's a comeback, and he could say he had that skill set, you know. And he was absolutely devastated when he couldn't do that anymore. But nobody was diagnosing him right. So he thought he was going mad because he had different depressions, a manic depression in his family. So see, when you don't have the right medical attention, it does not good things to you because you're scared. So we are big advocates for the right kind of diagnosis. So when somebody tells us that there's Alzheimer's, but we think it might be Lewy bodies, we help the family understand what that may be. Does the patient know that they're getting sick? How many people say, yes, they do. They, do. they don't know it's Alzheimer's. They don't know what the words are. But they're knowing that something's going on with them. They're not the same as they used to be. So we're humans, right? So what do we do? when we think we're not exactly functioning right. What do we do? Do we tell somebody? Do we deny it? Deny, deny, deny. And who do they fight with the most? That's right. So how hard is it to take those car keys away? How hard is it to bring that home health agency in to clean the house and help me be able to run the house for the, for, the, for the husband? How hard is that? So guess what he does? He does it all himself. So guess who doesn't go to the heart doctor anymore because I can't leave her alone with anybody. She won't stay with anybody. I can go on and on, and I'm sure some of you know who's shaking your heads you know that what I say is true. So that's our job, to make sure that they can do these things. Because we save a lot of caregivers that don't die in this process. Bob, you wanna say something? I probably don't need that, do I? Well, we're, re <laughs> well, you're, we're recording, he's the ch he's that's the thing. I, um, he's, he's, he's our chair. He's our chair. I want to tell you how much it has been a pleasure uh, to be able to come and present with you uh, today on a project that we are extremely excited about. Um, this will be our 12th center. Um, we, it'll be the third in St. Lucie County. And the first one in St. Lucie County, which was at St. Peter's in Fort Pierce was just about 10 years ago. So it's been accelerating because we opened St. Andrews just two years ago. Um, the need, as we all know, is great. It's tremendous. It is something that is not going to go away 
anytime soon. We've all read how a couple of major pharmaceutical companies, Big Pharma, is turning away from research on Alzheimer's and drug development because it seems to them that it's become a bottomless pit. With over 250 different clinical trials in the past two decades, we're still stuck with basically the same two modalities and pharmaceuticals that we were 15 years ago, Nemenda and Aricep. I am a believer that someday we will crack a number of things on this. However, even if we did next month, even if suddenly they came across something that says, well, we can start inoculating the young so they won't develop this. And we can prevent the plaques from forming and the tangles. We've got two generations in between who are going to need care. We also have those who, unfortunately, have a certain genetic predisposition for early onset. So, you, this congregation, is looking forward with us to be able to provide the benefits and services for 30 years, past the time that many of us will still be here. Can you just tell them how that this organization, our organization, we have a big responsibility to do what we say we're going to do, and we make a promise that we are making a promise. Our organization was born... It was a miracle, and I'm going to tell you what the miracle was. There was a gentleman named Mr. Baxter, Don Baxter, and his uncle got Alzheimer's, very wealthy man, had no children. So Mr. Baxter had this vision because he understood that the cure was not going to be tomorrow. So he, and he got to know us, got to know me, by the different work that we were doing, and I worked for another organization which I won't mention, but it's another national organization for Alzheimer's. Now, they started changing their, there was a time when their logo was easing the burden, finding the cure. And that was back in 1985, 86. I drank the lemonade, easing the burden. That was my job. That was the chapter's job. That was what we were supposed to do on the local level. But then about 1990, 91, they changed their slogan. It was a stand by you. Okay, stand by. I wonder what that means. But anyway, but then they changed it to a world without Alzheimer's. A world without Alzheimer's. And all of a sudden, they decided that services were not important. And I do agree that research is important. But I was watching a lot of people hurting. And we were taking care of a lot of people. We were raising our money to take care of people. So... Mr. Baxter comes in our life. He liked, he liked the daycares. He loved the ideas of what we were doing with the family nurse consultant. He loved all that. But he saw that more and more of the money that we were working hard and raising money and raising and, and donations had to go to a na on the national level. And he got pretty mad. And he said, this money has to stay here. So I said, well, you know, so he went ahead and he says, Mary, and this was around 1995, 96. He says, Mary, he says, if you could work for an organization that would be just for care, would you do that? I remember, I'd been working for this other organization since 1985. And I said, yes. So he built a $3 million building. Four, four million, three million, three point and it was about on six acres of land. And there's four charities in that building to this day. And we take care of the whole first floor. And we started out with a dollar a year. That's our rent. Now it's $10 a year. It's going in the wrong direction. But anyway, uh, there's the Boys and Girls Club of Palm Beach County's in that. WAYFM, Christian Radio Station. And Youth for Christ. So that's how come we were able to do what we've done over the years because we really weren't paying anything for rent or for real estate. We found out that we, our money needed to go for care. 
So that's what we did. So that's why I can say to you that for every dollar we get, 92 cents goes directly to services and resources. So that's that miracle. Did, did, uh, did anyone have any other questions, either for for uh, Alzheimer's or for the church, like, like like all that stuff we have. This is the one we discussed the deal. Yeah. So we're gonna. That's why we asked to put some offices here. So we could have our family nurse consultant, our case manager, our ID locator bracelet person mm -hmm. right here on a location. Because if we had to spend money for offices, okay, out there in commercial, commercial, you know, and that's where part of where the cost is. Because we found out that it'd be smarter if we did it this way. And then would it be okay to be like an anchor for this area? Mm -hmm. And I think... Well, we're thrilled about that. I hope so because it really it <laughs> gives us I a am. better way a better way to help people. A one stop deal. Yeah. A one stop deal. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The Cheryl. Oh. Yeah. The architect did a good. Okay, yeah, so some people think that, this, that, that we're adjusting this building. That's a new building, and if you go out to the doors and look to the right, you'll see two stakes in the ground, one by the shed and one down the way, and that's the corners. So that corner and that corner. So our building will sit right here. So it's kind of at a 90 degree. And, uh, all that, and, and, the, re and the garage is going to be behind it. Behind both of them. Yeah, and the reason why we've, we've put it where we are is we want uh, the building to be seen, and that's also why we put Alzheimer's on this end here, because our current building from the road will cover up this, this much of it. And so this, this, from here forward, we'll be able to see, be seen from the road. And, and we want, so we wanted you guys to be seen, seen from the road and, and things. Yeah, 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 Cheryl. Our church is liability. Okay, you want to work with Claude? Liability. We're working with Mary and the, and the group. Yeah. We'll have liability insurance. They're working with eleven other churches. They've got it narrowed. They got it nailed down. Tight. Yeah. Lutheran Church's central plan is going to make sure we have things nailed down tight. And so the liability. No, oh, he's there, not. There's insurance that covers that that will be taken care of. I was born in Hartford, Connecticut. Ooh, church town. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> We are insured up to the gazoo, okay, so to let you know that. We have $3 million. Yeah, well, so we avoid that big time. That was about insurance. The, were there any other questions for Greta? What, what, some kind of sign? Oh, so... Yeah, we do. We're in an HOA, a big HOA. And so, well, so, so, we're in Boca. Yeah, yeah. Well, also, also what, um, what they have requested is that right here in the middle is where their logo will be. And so we've been planning on building placement, and that's why I talked about being seen from the road that the logo and all that stuff will be able to be seen. So the, like the building's being placed, in a, and so the sign can be seen from the road for, for, all, for all So summers. what size of a, do they limit you with size? Yeah, that's as big as the we can sign. do. Our current sign out there is as big as we can do. But remember, she said that she's friends with all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like it's. On the friendship side? Yeah, 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 working on the friends. So if we happen to see an ACC community here, it shows up on the bottom. Yeah. So that's, but yeah, we're, we, we've been in talks with, with, with them about, about that stuff. That's, Have yeah. Have they been open? Do what? Have they been open? Are oh, about, no, no, no. You haven't brought that up yet, right? No, we haven't, we haven't brought that up yet. Nope. The, uh, it, are there any other questions for, for anything, for the church? Because remember, on the 17th when we meet, we're simply going to vote 
Yay or nay. Yay or nay. And the Turn day, on. Thanks a lot. <laughs> be that day where you ask the questions, whether it's financial, ACC care, so that when we meet together on the 17th, you're not raising your hand, how much, whatever. We've answered the questions today. That's why it was so important to make sure you're here. Because we don't want to have an hour and a half meeting on Sunday. Yeah. Steve wouldn't like that very well. <laughs> yeah. We, we have important people coming in after us. Absolutely. And <laughs> I don't know if I can do a vote in Korean. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, we have a Korean church meet here, too. Yes, ma'am. Yolanda. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The fire codes, uh, the firemen won't allow locked doors. Really? Have you t churches locked? So, so well for they, security they, at night and stuff, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, some, and and, the, and sometimes the church, sometimes I guess where the pastor is, they keep everybody out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You do, and you do, and the staff does have that, and we do have alarms on our, on our uh, doors as well. Okay, there's so alarms and. And that, but we don't expect our staff to uh, rely on those alarms. They're supposed to be. We do uh, what we call, um, you know, uh, patient counts every hour, every hour. So we know exactly who's in the room and uh, what's going on. So there's, we don't get, we don't like any types of elopements, and we do have a certain percentage that are at high risk. They have the transmitters on their arm. So, but we do a lot of training. A lot of training, so. And there's something else I wanted to mention about that, too. Uh, we have elopement drills. We have elopement drills. Elopement drills. And uh, we're putting that as, that, that has always been our, our, our protocol when it comes into, but we are the, we are the only daycare that really does that. Because we're also putting, we've also put it in the license to do that. And there's 42 centers in Florida now that have the license. So eventually, that's gonna be probably a prototype too, because again, like I said, we're the only buffer for people not to go into a nursing home or to an assisted living facility. So yeah, we're very, very conscientious about that. June, June, June 2020. Do you want to say something, Claude? May yeah. 20. He's May, got his, his May, target May day, May 20th. 2020. Yeah. yeah. And to your, from your lips yeah. to God's ears. Yeah. Trust me, we've been doing a lot of these projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Wellington was the worst. <laughs> Wellington took us two years. Oh. Now, you remember who we have to deal with, don't, don't you? The building inspector the codes, you name it, and you got the fire, the fire codes, and you got the health department, and then, of course, we have ACA. But Agency of Healthcare Administration, I have to say, they've really become very fond of us. So, you know, and we are, it seems that there's a bill out that's going through, that, which I don't want to bore you with, but the Department of Elder Affairs has always done the ruling and stuff, and this senator has decided they want everything under ACA. So we're not afraid of that. We think that's a good idea. So, anyway. All right. All right. These, do we, so you have a question, Bill. I've got a question. Uh, are there, is anything going to be monitored as far as cameras and concerns? Are they going to be able to see what's going on? Because that's something that they have to be Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, they have they have means of watching the doors. There's alarms on the doors, and and that that's yeah. So they and also they do a lot of really creative things where they disguise doors. Oh, yes. Yeah. So like if that's. You, if you go into, <laughs> Mm-hmm. So there's a very beautiful type of cover that looks like you're looking at a library. Yeah, it looks like a bookshelf. Or like in the kitchen, we have a bunch of pickle jars. Uh, yeah. It's really, they're beautiful, though. They're really, very nice. Yeah. So uh, we do that as well. Anything for a distraction. Mm-hmm. So, so did the deal look good on Grace's end yeah. as we presented it? Yeah. All right. Well, that's, I, we were expecting a lot of hard questions. Mary, you got all the hard questions. Like, people are, I, well, like, I, that's... I think they are important questions, and I think yeah. there's questions that we, when we're going into projects like this, they're definitely the questions. So, Pastor, yeah. Should this other building be able to use for other, other streets, other things? Yes, yes, that's, so we have it after 6 p.m., something like that? So after 6 p.m. every day, we have it, although we'll have to take down Alzheimer's Community Care stuff and put it back up and, and things like that. And so that's, you know, that's if we have it. But on the weekends, uh, when it's a little more worth it, this, this was a big part of our plan. This wall right here that separates us is like a, is like a um, foldable wall. A foldable wall from a, like a ballroom at a hotel, you know, insulated and all that stuff. And that'll go up, and then this will be a very large place. So this room is about the same size as that one. So, like, you and this will be available 24/7 for our church. Yeah. And pastor's office is right here. So the small room that, that's about that size is available 24/7. Plus, there'll be a classroom, and then the office for the secretary to protect the pastor. <laughs> Runs interference. And the secretary can get her work done because the pastor won't be interrupting all the time. <laughs> 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 so so yeah we it's, yes we'll have this space this will be get this building will be giving us another room cindy will be able to do choir practice on sunday morning what <laughs> like we can't do that right now because of our current limitations there's so two, there's two there's two events that we sponsor that we use uh the rooms as much as we can and one is the thanksgiving dinner Last Thanksgiving, we served six, 700 meals in our different daycares. So we're pretty proud of that because of the fact that some of these families, the only time they actually congregate to do Thanksgiving is with us. So, and then we also do one in May, which is called Caregiver Appreciation Day. And so we do, uh, we have a different celebration for them. So a lot of caregivers come in with their loved ones and their families. So we talk about that as well. So that's what we do. Thank you. Uh, I think you said the building was going to be around 6,000 square feet. Yes, ma'am. It's going to be, what, two? Something like, well, I don't, I don't, what's what's the square footage of our side? Oh, how big is this church? Compared to this building? Bigger. (laughs) Yeah. Because if we think of that room as a small section here, yeah. if we think of that room as a small section here, this is a big section. Yeah. That's my own yeah. best way. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be bigger. Why are the same size? Yeah. Built. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Be- much better built. This, this building was shoddily built. <laughs> so any, any other questions?
the architectural lighting at night. We, we have not t talked about that at all. I was here last night, and we have that 65 down there that's perceived to be over. I would like to do some, some exterior lighting um, for, for this place, just to see and beauty at night. Yeah, yeah, it, it probably, I'm sure there's some. I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head, though. Judge that? Don't worry, we don't judge. <laughs> <laughs>
So we have instances sometimes where someone who's here a few months out of the year might be in one of the centers, but it's primarily, it's gonna be in your community. The demand is here, uh, there's no question about it. Can I just say something? You people are very fortunate too. You have a wonderful pastor. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and you also have wonderful people in Claude and Pat. <laughs> I mean that. Um, you know, it, this is really a very spiritual relationship that we have here. And it's just so, it's the kind of thing that our organization, and this is something we've been talking about ever since I met all of you, of how driven we are to make this work because we feel we're all on the same page. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. And we're, we're so pr pleased to, to, uh, to go forward with this venture with Alzheimer's Community Care. And thank you, everyone, for coming to this. It's, you, you came. Like, that's awesome. Like, uh, all, all that stuff. So thank you for asking questions. <laughs> I did. I did. She said I threatened. Yeah, yeah. I, I, have, I have things. Yeah, Linda. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ed Bach, we, we, we talked about him at the, at the beginning. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a great day. God bless you all. All right, good deal.